Where do you stand on the Ozempic debate? Because that's a hot one. Oh, it is. I'm, I'm so grateful you're bringing this up. Yeah, so all of these, Ozempic and Magovi, and it's and their ilk, there's a huge, huge, that's a huge class of drug now. They all fall within uh, a, a drug class called GLP-1 receptor agonists. And let me just give a brief break uh, background on that. GLP-1 is a hormone that we all make from our small intestine. Mm. So when food starts coming down the small intestine, certain carbohydrates, certain proteins, certain fats, um, they will stimulate this increase in GLP-1. Other things like yerba mate as a tea, that will increase GLP-1. Mm. Allulose, um, a rare sugar. It's not an artificial sweetener, but it doesn't have calories. It has a greater effect than like sugar does. So there's a, there's a handful of molecules that will increase GLP-1. But when GLP-1 is up, its main it has two main mechanisms of action. Firstly, it will inhibit a hormone called glucagon, which is kind of insulin's opposite. Whereas insulin is trying to bring glucose down at any moment in the blood, glucagon wants to push blood glucose levels up. Mm. And so when you take these things, GLP-1 comes up, it inhibits uh, GLP-1's up, it inhibits glucagon, which helps blood sugar levels come under control. But the second effect of GLP-1 is that it induces a sense of satiety by really slowing down the intestines. Mm. Now, let's bring that back to the drugs. When these drugs were first used, they were used at a very a relatively low dose. And at that relatively lower dose, its primary effect was to inhibit glucagon. Thus, the primary observation was that blood sugar levels would be down. And mm -hmm. so it was used as an anti-diabetic medication because it helped in control blood sugar. However, they noticed that these people tended to eat a little less, that they just weren't as hungry as often. And that is, but is, is what's been really leveraged with these other drugs now. Like Wagovi now, where you've just basically, all you've literally done is multiplied the dose of the drug. Right. And now, in addition to inhibiting glucagon, you are really slowing down the intestines. And I mean, really. So, you know, if you and I were to go out and get some lunch after this, food would sit in our stomach for about four to five hours. Mm. And then it starts moving out of the stomach through the small intestine and ultimately out through this process called peristalsis, which is just kind of this slow, rhythmic contraction along the intestines, moving the food out of the body. However, with these drugs and what GLP-1 is doing when it's up, dialed up to an 11 out of 10, now it's slowing down the intestines so much that food can be sitting in the stomach for up to 24 hours. Wow. So people will experience something called ozempic burps, yeah. where the food is like putrefying in their stomach, creating noxious gas. Jeez. Now they're burping up this horrific scent, Holy crap. this stench because of the food. In addition, people who appear to be somewhat sensitive to it or take a double dose because it's not working as well as it used to, they can freeze, they can paralyze their intestines, Jeez. which is acutely very lethal. So these drugs, they yes, they will... They will cause weight loss, but it comes at uh, a, a substantial risk, including a paper published in one of the most preeminent biomedical journals, the New England Journal of Medicine. They found that for every, for every 10 pounds of weight lost, six pounds is fat mass, mm. four pounds is lean mass. Whoa. So 40% of the weight loss is coming from tissues like muscle and bone. Jeez. Now, when you imagine, let's imagine a middle-aged or older woman who has a very difficult time making muscle and bone. Mm -hmm. Let's say that she's overweight, as most people are these days. They get on this drug. Two years in, a paper was published recently finding that 70% of people in the U.S. at 24 months get off the drugs because they get sick of feeling sick. Mm -hmm. So the patient themselves decide, I don't want to be on this drug anymore. And weight rebounds immediately. And within a year or so, they've often gone within just a few pounds of where they started. Wow. But imagine, think, let's go back to the paradigm I just presented, which is for every 10 pounds, six pounds is fat mass, four pounds is lean mass. Now they get off the drug and they start gaining it all back. One of these weights is, one of these masses is going to come back very quickly. One is not, mm. especially depending on your age. If you were a young college aged male, no problem. You can gain that muscle and, and uh, bone mass back. But if you're a 60-year-old woman or even a 60-year-old guy, mm -hmm. no, good luck. You're, you're, not, you're not getting that back. You're going to gain that fat back very easily, <laughs> but you're not going to gain that muscle and that bone back. 